Hey, 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 goodness to you is Sporty King. And I always say goodness because I don't know whether you're watching morning, afternoon, or evening, but isn't it great to have good in front of your salutations? <laughs> hey, look, I'm on a little, I'm on early if you're coming on with me live and in person. My broadcast starts at one, but for future reference, always remember, I always try to get on at least five minutes early so then I can do my shout outs or welcomes and just give people a chance to settle in. Because even if you put, you know, you, gotta, you know how to use technology, make it work for you. It's personal choice. But what I say is even if you say, oh, well, I'm going to check out Sporty's broadcast at one, when you when the reminder comes on, it was, oh, my God, you were doing something else. You know, well, let me close this out. Well, you know what? That's why I come on five minutes early to give you that extra five minutes to say, let me close this out and settle in and enjoy this beautiful word that I'm about to get from this marvelous man, <laughs> Sporty King. All right. Hey, and don't think that I'm patting myself on the back and not telling you that you should. I'm going to make sure I remind you that in this broadcast and in future ones, and you can check your archives and find that I've done it in the past because it's so important, I think, to tap, pat ourselves on the back. God has given you a gift and a talent and, and an arm. <laughs> but no, but you know what? Because it's a spiritual arm. It doesn't that have to be a physical one. A spiritual arm It's a thought to remind you to pat yourself on the back and give thanks for the glory of what he is doing in your life, has done in your life, and will continue to do in your life through you. And that's where the pat on the back comes, is recognizing that it's not really me, but it's through me. So we've got less than four minutes for today's message. But again, I'm broadcasting now on LinkedIn, YouTube, as well as Facebook. So if you're coming in, uh, what I do is if somebody puts a comment and they let me know they're there, I can give them a shout out. And then I can put your name on the screen so that the other two medias could know who else is on board because they can't see it. If you comment, like I see there's somebody here now, but I don't know where they're coming in from. But if they put a hello, I can give that shout out. And if it's from Facebook, then LinkedIn and YouTube will know that I've got the person on. It goes back and forth. But again, always think about how you want to use technology rather than allowing technology to use you. See, old school, a lot of times we're so busy saying, Oh, these kids of today, you know, these damn kids of today, in fact. And I like to remind us that these damn kids of today are related to the damn kids of yesterday. See, children mimic and mirror adults. If you're the adult that they mimic and mirror, you shouldn't have a problem with it. We have to make sure that instead of taking credit away from our young people and our next generation, that we're giving them credit. They don't have to, and they didn't go, yeah, oh, they don't know how good they got it. No, they don't. So shall we penalize them for what they don't know instead of, uh, um, I was trying to think of alliteration, think of a word that begins with P, but instead of uh, empower them, with what we do know and what they could know. And therefore it becomes, now it becomes incumbent on their part too, to recognize that we're not uh, minimizing their growth and their, their success, but we're fueling it. How can you nurture the, the growth and success of our future generation? We got less than two minutes to go for today. And you see me squint because I'm trying to be, you know, you know, smooth and not use my glasses when I do these broadcasts. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> We got less than two minutes to go for today's message. So you still got time to run and get yourself a glass of water. All right. But that's, again, bring generations together. I, 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 I always, I have a, an affirmation and my affirmations mean the acronyms that are affirmations, affirmations. And one is GAP, G-A-P, that's generations are people. See, so we have to close the gap. Let me put that in there because I, I wasn't planning on telling you that one, but let me go on and put that in there. Gap is generations are people. And so that's what we have to do is constantly remind. Ah, oh, okay. And when I put it in, it, it shows up on YouTube, but it doesn't show up on Facebook or LinkedIn. Then that's why I would have to do this. See, and that's what I'm saying about when I do my shout outs, you can see, but generations are people. Don't get so caught up in saying millennials do this and uh, Gen X does this, that, that, and to where you don't realize that you're dealing with 
people and people at different ages and different stages need guidance. Everybody's got a mentor and everybody wants to be in position to be a mentor. Everybody's got a messenger. Choose your messengers carefully because that is what makes the generations come together. Again, we can't, you know, don't be like the few, the past generations, uh, you know, they used to knock what we were doing. And now you're going to carry that torch. Uh, you're going to just continue to do that and knock what the next generation is doing. Now, one thing that a lot of people in my pre previous generation will show me that they believe in me. And that's what made me believe, helped me believe in myself. And that's what becomes part of the fuel of my success. So let's get started here as, we t as, as it's now one o'clock. And so often what people do is uh, old school, I, I laugh, I say old school rules, right? Because the old school, they used to say that Wednesday was hump day. It was hump day. Hump day is actually an idiom that means Wednesday, a day of the week. The term hump day first appeared in the 1960s in North America, most probably in office settings and business offices. OK, but hump day is based on the idea that the work week is a mountain that one must climb. The general office work week is and actually was Monday through Friday. See, they didn't, you know, consisting of five days, they didn't respect and didn't use the term of uh, flex time back then. OK, so that's why it was strictly hump day, meaning Monday through Friday. OK, and so this is where that came from. And so as just as Wednesday was considered as the uh, as the, the mountain that one needed to climb, Monday uh, and Tuesday were the climbing days of the week and are therefore psychologically different, difficult to get through. Wednesday is the highest part of the climb up a proverbial mountain. So the thinking uh, goes that if one can make it to hump day, therefore Thursday and Friday are an easy slide into the weekend. So let me get my first comment and welcome. Hey, what's going on, Vic? Hey, my fam, blessing to you all. And he says, fam, because you know what? That's what we do. This is our family day. Wednesday is my interactive day. If you don't know, I do broadcast three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Each one is different. Monday is my m Monday morning moment, non-interactive um, two-minute tape message to get your week started. Friday is gift Friday. And that is God is for today. And that's my sharing of one of my original poems. It's an eight to 12 minute message, not interactive, where I share the poem, tell you how to use it to keep yourself inspired and keep conversation going with someone else, as well as I then make it available as a gift from me to you. If you like a colorful keepsake copy of the poem, then I offer that as well. So today is our Glue Wednesday and our interactive session where we, uh, where I I go, I like to go 30 to 45 minutes and it's family. So you're going to see other people come in and, and, and welcome themselves into the group and say hello to the family. Feel free to respond to them as we go through. So thanks, Vic. Good to see you on board here. Okay. So I was just finishing saying that Thursday and Friday are the, the easy slide into the weekend. So I decided that Wednesday is the middle of a traditional seven day week. It doesn't matter whether you work Monday to Friday. It's the middle of a traditional seven-day week that keeps the week end and the week beginning together. And so it brings us into that prayerful pose, which is one of my favorite. And therefore, I like to call it the day that is the glue. And therefore, Glue Wednesday is G-L-U-E. God's love undoes everything. Not that it'll tear it apart, but what has been torn apart, God's love will bring it back together. It will undo that tear and make things just fine for you. Okay. So today I will do what I call rekindle. I will rekindle the gas alphabet series, the glue alphabet series. I, I call it re, uh, because back when the pandemic started, uh, I was broadcasting Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, all glue. Right. And so uh, what I did was uh, every week, uh, every message featured the next letter in the alphabet with words suggested by last week's viewers. 
So that's why I called it the alphabet series. Every week I had I featured a different letter where people would put in the in the thread a word beginning with the next week's feature letter. And then that following week, I had to get that word into my message. So therefore I call them my co-authors. This week's message will feature the letter H. And my co-authors with words beginning with the letter H are actually two of my homeboys. One of them's here already, Victor Morris. His word is have. And then the other one is Jose Valencia, who we call Haas. His word is hero. And you'll see the co-author's name and word as I smoothly read it into the message. It'll look like this. Where it'll just, excuse me, it'll just have the word and the co-author's name. I won't say, hey, there it is. I'll just show, excuse me, that'll just appear on the screen as I can continue on in the message. But what you'll also notice is that there'll be times where I may use a version of the word rather than the actual word. So just a little explanation if this is your first time joining me. And even if you are, by the way, P.S., I like to say P.S., by the way, if you are joining by just watching the video, you can still make comments in the chat and say things and so I can share them with people. And now my other co-office and homie is there. I can see you on, I don't see you on Facebook, Haas. Haas. I just see you on, um, on YouTube. So P and let me also say, if did you make a comment? See, you have to make a comment for me to see you. I won't see, and, and I'm glad you asked that because he's asked, did I see you on Facebook? No, I won't see you unless you make a comment. So give that a try, Haas, and see what happens. All right. Because what happens on Facebook or LinkedIn, it'll just show that people are watching. And as well as on YouTube, it just shows that people are watching, but it doesn't say who it is unless you make a comment. And that's why. And so that's so. Yeah. So good. Haas is going to give that a shot, a try as I continue to move on as, as I'm now giving my explanation. OK, so this week's message, I always have what I call a guiding scripture. OK, but let me put my my co-authors back there because those are my homies. <laughs> My homeboys are my co-authors on today, right? But I always have what I call a guiding scripture. And my guiding scripture today is Revelation 22 and 11. And I only wrote it partially in the intro, but here it is in full. Let the one who is doing wrong continue to do wrong. The one who is vile continue to be vile. The one who is good continue to do good. And the one who is holy, continue in holiness. That's my guiding scripture. In creating today's message, you have to chew, you have to see why A again. And the reason I say you have to see why A again is if you were with me in my May 18th broadcast, you already know that CYA stands for choose your attitude. See, and that's why I'm saying again, because I'm using the CYA again. So you have to choose your attitude. So there's no great shock for you there if you've been with us before. Yet, since there's no shock, I want to give you a twist as to why the scripture connects to the message. You see, I created the CYA, Choose Your Attitude, affirmation to humorously speak with my military family about getting ready to deploy or coming back from deployment, getting ready to reintegrate. In both cases, that was back in, in, in May. In both cases, they're getting ready to do something where the facts cannot be changed. How they handle the facts can be changed. Thus, the need to choose an attitude of faith, which was my glue title on that broadcast. And in the Bible, what's actually getting ready to happen is in this last books, is in this last book, which is Revelation 22 and 12. See, I am coming soon and my reward is with me to repay all according to their deeds. In our Christian faith, that's the fact. 
See, I'm coming soon and my reward is with me to repay all according to their deeds. That's a fact. And then two, and then, and, and the fact also is just joining me in from Facebook is Tuesday Banks. And, and I love it. The, uh, the Tuesday is her name. One of my good young sisters from Chicago. What's going on, Tuesday? Tuesday, you're here for the word? I got the word for you, my sister. <laughs> okay. So I heard you. I hope you heard that first explanation. But in our faith, that's a fact. That's a fact. See, I'm coming soon. And the reward is with me to repay all according to their deeds. Revelation 22 and 12. And P.S., by the way, let me just put a quick asterisk on that because I want us to remember, speaking of what Tuesday say, I'm here for the word. One of the things that we have to do with the word is use it properly. And it's the book of Revelation, singular, not revelations. And I know I've seen people yeah, from the book of Revelations. No, it's the book of Revelation and it's singular. Make sure that you are quoting the word right, because therefore someone else is learning the word and you want to give them the right word, the proper word. OK, so when Revelation, um, what Revelation, our guiding scripture, what Revelation 12 and 11 gives us is instructions or on how to handle Revelation 12. OK, that's the key that we have to recognize. So Revelation 12 and 21 and 11 gives us instructions on how to handle it. Namely, you can't help someone who doesn't want your help. So let's go back and look at that Revelation 22 and 11. See, let the one who is doing wrong continue to do wrong. The one who is vile continue to be vile. The one who is good continue to do good. And the one who is holy continue in holiness. In other words, you can't help someone who doesn't want your help. That person who is doing wrong, if you want them to stop, no, it's up to them. They're doing vile. It's still up to them. So that becomes the key. And so I wrote a poem entitled, I Can't Save the World. And I'll actually read this poem as this coming Friday's Gift Friday message and broadcast. But I'm going to spoil alert you now that the last stanza reads, I can't help, I can only help those who are willing to help themselves. Think about 22 and 11 as I'm reading this. I can only help those who are willing to help themselves by helping myself remain true to the message I get from my mirror. I can't save the world, but I can save you. That's what your mess, your mirror needs to be telling you so that you don't have to feel like you're failing when you can't help the person who doesn't want your help. I can't save the world, but I can save you. Now, therein ends my biblical stuff to set up what I want to speak to you about today, as, as Tuesday says, the word that I want to deliver. You see, since that time in May, where I'd introduce CYA to my military family and to you on glue, I've extended the CYA in three directions. The first is CYA, confirm your attributes. Confirm your attributes. When you're dealing with facts, okay? When you're dealing with facts, you have to know where you stand and what keeps you standing? What are some of the attributes, the characteristics of your existence that have helped you get this far in life? And I'm not asking you that as a rhetorical question. I want you to put one to two of the characteristics that have gotten you this far in your life in the chat. But hold on. I got a twist for you. I got a twist. I want you to choose a characteristic that begins with the initials of your first and last name or both. Okay. For instance, I want you to, I want you to say, you know, my initials are SK. So my sarcasm and my kindness are characteristics that have gotten me this far in my life. Okay. So that's what I want you to do. Using your first initial and last initial of your name, 
Give me a characteristic. So who we got on here that I know about Vic Morris, something with a V, something with the M, Jose Valencia, something with a J, something with a V, Tuesday Banks, something with a T, something with a B. Okay, meanwhile, because I know I got family members who come on and you might be watching the video, still use it. If you have, if the first and last name of your um of your uh first initial and la and uh, your first and last name are the same, I give you an option to just use your first and second letter of your name. So for, for instance, Roger Carroll Rogers, R R is use R O. Bruce Brown, use B R. So put that in the chat, okay? That's what I want you to do. Put that in the chat of characteristics that, uh, and you see the assignment right there on your screen. What are the characteristics of your existence that have helped you get this far in life? And as you write them, my background question to you is going to be whether or not you're celebrating and appreciating them for the growth, change, and responsibility that paints a brighter picture of you. Which characteristics will you keep to get you to your next step? I'm going to take a breath here. That's the background of what I'm going to do, be doing. But let me see what you put in the chat. What are the characteristics of your current existence, your current success, because you have to count the fact that you're here as success. What characteristics are you using that have helped you get this far in life? The clock is ticking. Dun, 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 dun. See, that's another thing, by the way, as a speaker. Sometimes when you ask the question, shut up. Not just as a speaker. How about as a parent? Not just as a parent, if you don't have kids, how about as a leader? Not just as a leader, if you don't have a group that you lead, how about as a friend? Sometimes, especially when you ask a question, shut up and wait for the answer. <laughs> you see, we have to be comfortable in silence. Okay, here we go. Haas, JV, joy and value. Characteristics that feed his existence and his success. Joy and value. And let me tell you, joy is one of my affirmations, J-O-Y, just one you. And that's worth celebrating. People say, well, you know, there's nobody else like you. Well, there isn't. So that's joy. Yeah, see, so how you can build on that characteristic and value is in one of my other affirmations, L-O-V-E, let ourselves value everyone. You have to know your value so that you can value other people. And that is what's going to keep your existence going. Family member just joined, Daphne Francis, her determination and her friendliness. <laughs> And determination and friendly, yeah, because when you're determined, when you're going to make something happen, oh, and you can't make this stuff up, as one of my spiritual brothers likes to say, Daniel Lightning, <laughs> and, uh, Wilson and Shango, J Daniel Lightning Jackson and Shango Wilson, you can't make this stuff up. That's coming up later in my message. <laughs> Your determination is that's coming up you, you because that's the thing. People want to follow you based on what your strengths and your characteristics are. So thank you. Vic, Vic got version of the story is two-sided. M, me, to concentrate on me to be free, right? <laughs> I love y'all. And again, even if you're watching the video, still put something in there. Because it's good to see the number of characteristics that we can put feed into our thread. The chat is our thread, y'all. What number of characteristics can we feed into our thread so that we can see that we are sharing them rather than simply owning them? But we still have to own them. You have to own it. You have to stand in your glory, but you have to share those characteristics. So you have to share the joy and the value of who you are. You have to share the determination and your friendliness to attract people to you. And you have to share your version because who you are. Yeah, you are the version of you. So what are you projecting with your version? Version. Who do people see when they see you? You're your version of who you are. And there's another way of looking at that, Vic, because guess what? There's another victor, but you're the only version of this victor. 
And that, and so therefore, anybody, even if you have a name that's in common with somebody else, like Tuesdays, but she spells Tuesday differently. She's a different version of Tuesday. And me, you have to concentrate on you because freedom, we're going to be talking about freedom in a way, but it's, it's concentrating on who we are. Tuesday, you're not going to throw anything in there. You're not going to throw in touristic and business. <laughs> or bodacious, okay? But here, again, so now I say to all of you, whatever you wrote, whatever you wrote, have you been celebrating and appreciating those characteristics for your growth, your change, and your responsibility and painting a brighter picture of yourself? Have you celebrated those characteristics? And then after the celebration, which ones will you keep to get you to your next step? It ain't over to the fat lady sings, right? And you know what? In fact, I have a, a, a I saw I have a, a mask that I saw from somebody else that said, um, "It may be over, but it's not done." Because isn't that what you said? It is done. It's not over to the fat lady sing, but it ain't. It may not be over, but it's not done. Okay, so let's keep on moving. So think about that too. So you don't have to put that in the chat, by the way. That's one. Of the, that is a rhetorical question. It's just to remind you, you know, ask you which characteristics because sometimes, see, we blow off our own strengths. You know, oh well, yeah, I did that already. No, 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 no. Keep celebrating that. Keep celebrating that because, of course, that when you decide which ones you're going to keep. Well, now you're going to have to CYA. Channel your attention. <laughs> you're going to have to channel your attention. Because what do you need to do? You have to ask, what do you, I need to do to be focused on to get prepared for my next step? See, what do I need to do to focus on my next step? I need to celebrate the step I've taken so that I can now channel with what the next step is. And one did, what, and you know what you need to focus on? Focus on the quality of the time you spend with people, especially like you say, Haas, your value of yourself. Focus on the quality of time you spend with people and yourself rather than the quantity. You may spend a lot of time with a certain people, but a certain person, but if you're not getting anything from that person, the quality may be diluted. That's not necessarily a, a guarantee because you could be spending a lot of quality, a, a lot of quantity time with a quality person. See, don't let somebody tell you this is the only thing that means. Just like Victor said, I got two sides of the story of the image. So, and like Tuesday say, I want to get the word. Well, words are powerful. And so we have to make sure that we listen to the words. So that and listen to the, I call it listen to the paragraph, not the sentence. Listen to the fullness of the word. And that's why I said you have to be comfortable in silence. You see how it all starts to come together? You have to sometimes shut up and listen to what the other person is saying. Not the opening sentence which you agree, disagree with or agree with, but the next two sentences that explain that first sentence. You have to do that. And that's going to be coming up in the CYA as well. You have to slow down and focus on the quality of your time spent rather than the quantity. So that's one and two new different meanings we have for CYA. And so here's that third one, and that is CYA. And that's why even with what I just explained to you, focusing on that quality time is you have to CYA, you have to control your anger. You have to control your anger. Here it goes. We're at a very emotional time in our American history. And much of it is centered around politics. Now, I don't need you and I, and I don't want you to drop your political comments in the chat. I'm not interested in that. Please don't. What I want is for you to realize that there are those who are as passionate about their cause and their opinion as you are about yours or against theirs. 
So even like when Haas writes joy, just one year, I'm celebrating being me. There's someone who's celebrating being them who doesn't want to be like you. You are not everybody's messenger. Go back to what we were talking about, our guiding scripture. You can't help someone who doesn't want your help. And so therefore you can't decide that other people want to be like you. Let those who are vile stay vile. Let those who are doing wrong continue to do wrong. Let those who are being a blessing continue to be a blessing. See, that's what the, that, that uh, guiding scripture is saying to us. Handle your business. Take care of you. And if you get angry, you can be controlled. You see, you, I want you to control your anger. I want you to recognize that I want you to um, take your stand and state your case, but not through anger. Take your stand and state your case, but not through anger. You see, anger is an, a reactionary emotion. And anyone who can get you angry and keep you angry can control you. That's why you have to express your disagreement, but not through anger. Because if I can get you angry and I can keep you angry, I can control you because you'll spend that quality time thinking about their next move instead of thinking about your next move. <laughs> okay? So, so, what you say, Vic? Exactly. Let it be what it is. Don't you want someone to respect you for who you are? You got to respect them for who they are. Or you have to say, you know what? Mm, you don't fit into my life. But remember, we're talking about what your next step is. So if this person doesn't fit into your next step, don't give them a whole lot of, don't give them a whole lot of um, rent, a lot, let them rent a lot of space in your mind. I don't understand very well English. <laughs> But I love you. Oh, thank you, Jocelyn. Oh my God, thank you. Amen. Um, and, and and Jocelyn, you know what I can do? By the way, I can. If you have specific questions, I could actually always re-explain some stuff for you, either in Messenger or in the thread. And you can say, and if there's a certain thing that you don't understand, hey, remember this is family. We can slow it down, okay, and 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 and, and uh, explain it for you. But thank you, and but because see, this is what what Jocelyn has just done is given us another part of the situation. See, sometimes you don't understand what someone else is going through, so you have to decide how you feel about how they're making you feel. Their words may not be the words you need, and or, or maybe you don't understand the words, but there's something about them that you just decide, you know what? I don't like that person. I don't want that quality in my life. It's okay. And you, you know, you, we're gonna say we don't like a certain person, but, uh, and that's just another emotion. So don't let it stay there. Don't get so caught up in, I don't like them and then let it become angry and where I hate them. Mm -mm. You cannot like a person. There's nothing wrong with that, but don't let it build and become anger. So Jocelyn, I hope, and, and anytime you can just say, repeat that, Jocelyn, because I, I believe you're coming in from Africa, Jocelyn. Let us know where you're coming in from. Jocelyn, where are you Where are you joining the broadcast from? Thank, and thank you so much for joining, because I know I, I had you, uh, you were on last week. I remember seeing you in there and saying hello. <laughs> and so good to see you, Jocelyn. So where are you signing in from, Jocelyn? And, and, and you all, again, Jocelyn brings up another good point, y'all. Everybody doesn't stand English, understand English. So everybody won't understand what you're doing. There's no need to be angry that they don't understand what you're doing because they can't see it from your perspective because they're not you. You see how this all works together? It is not easy being us, but us is what we have. Anger is a reactionary emotion. If I can keep you angry, I can control you because you're going to be thinking about what's my next move instead of what's your next move. Now, I did a mean post um, this week uh, of, of what I thought was a great line. I've been binge watching. Wait, let me see. This might be Jocelyn saying where she's coming in from. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, my God. The Ivory Coast, where um, my good friend, Jean, Jean uh, is is he's a, he's a, he's a fifth uh, well he's an English teacher in Ivory Coast and I've adopted him 
and his class, and uh, and I try to do monthly. Uh, I was have we've done monthly broadcasts where I talk to his class and help them improve their English so that we can do stuff like what Jocelyn is doing. Are you one of John's students or somebody that just knows? Okay, but thank you. Thank you for coming in from Africa. Africa, yes! <laughs> All right, y'all. We rolling, we rolling. Okay, but here's, um, here's what I want to say to you. Okay, I've been binge watching the Netflix show Ozark. And, and I, I did a post on it earlier in the week on January on June 26 about a great line that I heard in that in that show and here's another great line uh, and you can I'm going to post that later on in my broadcast but here's another great line that I just heard from them all right and uh and and it's it said I like Marty but he thinks too much he's got to act He's got to act. Somebody does. And so he, he just said that when he was telling Wendy, who's Marty's wife, after he had already told Marty that you have to make people react to you. So that's what I'm saying about anger is a reactionary emotion. If I can keep you angry, I can control you. So therefore, don't get angry and, and you have to Act, react to somebody else, you stay calm and let them react to you. All right, let me take a second and see what we got there. Jocelyn says, uh, I'm from Africa, Ivory Coast. Yes, thank you. And now y'all see how to say Ivory Coast in Africa. Uh, what language is that? But Cote d'Ivoire, Cote d'Ivoire, d'Ivoire, that's the Ivory Coast, y'all. Okay. So thank you again, Jocelyn. I'm going to keep up with you. We're going to make, we're going to help you understand. We're going to help you understand. Not a problem. It's great to reach out all over the, hello. See, there you go. <laughs> thank you, Vic. Jocelyn, you got a hello from Vic. All right. So that's the key. But yeah, so this is the quote that I heard on Ozark and uh, Marty, who's the husband, thinks too much. He's got to re to act. He's got to act. Because that's the key is he says, you have to make people react to you. So let me ask you, will you continue to get angry? Yes. Yes. Is it wrong for you to get angry? No, it's not wrong at all. No emotion is wrong. They just exist. Anger will seep its way in, but what you've got to do is recognize it when it comes so that you can be sure not to allow it to stay and be the dominant emotion. One of the best ways to do that is to slow your pace down, really think about the issue. Then what can and are you going to do about that issue? One of my daily inspirational readings is my 2019 theme, and that is my 2019 theme, and that is Jesus called out to them, come, be my disciples, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and went with him. That's Matthew 4, 19 through 20. And some of you know that the Bible I read is called the Touchpoint Living Bible, and it has what is called Touchpoints, modern day, um, modern day analogies to scripture so that you can understand them a little better. So this is one of my daily readings, and they had what was called a touch point, and the, the subject of this um, verse is commitment, commitment. And here's, so here's what I read every morning about Matthew 4, 19 through 20. The simplicity of Jesus's words defy, belies their power. The call and promise, and promise of Jesus is striking, but remains powerless without a decision on our part. If Peter and Andrew, which is who Jesus was talking to in that scripture, had merely listened and said, that's a very interesting invitation. Maybe we can talk about it again after fishing season. <laughs> they would not have become Jesus's disciples. Jesus demands and a decision to follow him. Will you come? He demands a decision to follow him or to remain where you are. 
A real decision will lead to action. The disciples left their nets and followed Jesus. Without decision and action, commitment is just an interesting idea. And so that's why early I asked, are you using the characteristics? Are you celebrating the characteristics that you've gotten that help you that have helped you get this far? And will you continue to? Because that's what you have to be committed. That's the value that Haas talked about. Are you committed to yourself? That's what, what Daphne talked about. Are you determined to be who you are and friendly enough to open up and welcome somebody from across the world? What Vic just did with um, uh, Jocelyn and what I have done, and, I, and we thank you. So that's what I want to do. Recognize and remember, a real decision will lead to action. Without decision and action, commitment is just an interesting idea. And with those three that I tell, I promised you my three new CYAs, I actually added a fourth one last Saturday during my virtual session with the Naval Guard, the, Na the Navy National, National Guard. In the Navy's literature, they refer to deployments as adventures. So I decided that CYA also needs to remind you to create your adventure. Create your adventure. And see, every adventure has a hero. A hero is a person of distinguished courage or ability, admired for his or her brave deeds and noble qualities. Are you and your noble characteristics the villain or the co-star in your adventure, in your life's adventure? where you should actually be the hero. Let me restate that sentence because I broke it up. Are you and your characteristics the villain or co-star in your life's adventure where you should be the hero? J-O-Y, just one you. You should be your hero. In other words, have you confirmed your attributes? And are you, uh, here's, uh, here's one of my favorite Charlie Brown cartoons where he says, we only live once, Snoopy. And Snoopy says, wrong. We only die once. We live every single day. <laughs> Have you channeled your attention to living that life every single day? You only die once, but are you living every day? Channel your attention and focus on where you're going. And are you making sure that the decisions and actions address the issues with your best state of being calm? Are you CYA controlling your anger? Are you controlling your anger? Here's the first quote from Ozark that I wanted to mention to you, okay? It says, let me get this out of the way. When you think you're going to die yesterday, today is sweet. So hang in there. Lose your stuff. Get angry tomorrow. Today is no day to fall apart because that's what you're doing when you get angry. You fall apart. But this, he made this quote where he was talking about a guy who was on his deathbed. And so he had called in all his friends. To, they sat around the, bre the bed talking about the good times. And so they were there for a couple of days and, and he, he was supposed to die any day. He didn't die. So eventually they all left. But guess what? He, had, he died once they left. And as tragic as they, they uh, as that sound, the sweetness of the death is what this quote was. See, when you think you're going to die yesterday, he thought he was going to die any day. Then today is sweet. So, you know. Lose your stuff tomorrow. Get angry tomorrow. Right now, don't let that anger seep in and let someone control you. Don't let anger be the dominant emotion in your celebration of your life. Let calm and patience and love be the dominant emotion so that you can celebrate the way that you need to be celebrating. In other words, I want you to recognize that your life can be a wonderful adventure when you use the bigger heading of CYA 
choosing your attitude and choosing an attitude of faith. Because we also know that faith is one of my favorite affirmations, F-A-I-T-H, feeling as if there's hope. And my hope is in the last two versions of the Bible, Revelation 22, 20 through 21. And that is, he who is faithful, he who is the faithful witness to all these things says, yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. Revelation 22, 20, and 21. Those are the final words in the Bible. And may the grace of the Lord be with you all as you simply enjoy this glue. God's love undoes everything. And before I thank my co-authors, I want to say, oh man, Vic is saying, I'm controlling my reactions now. Mm. Let us pray. Let us pray. Control your reaction. Because the truth is, someone who is misguided it's supposed to be misguided. You, you know what? Didn't I say last week? There are no good stories in the Bible. They're all good endings. They all have the cycle. Problem, faith, or prayer, patience, and then testimony. So every book of the Bible gives you a knucklehead <laughs> that you have to believe is not going to win. See, so they give you the problem, they give you a knucklehead, but you got to believe they're not going to win. You have to have faith and you pray that they're not, that you will overcome. Now you have to be patient that, you know, there's no, there's no, how many books have, uh, you know, one verse and two, that's it. They take you through the whole Bible. They take you through that whole, the book of Genesis is like 50 something. The book, you know, Exodus is 30 something, you know, whatever. I don't know the numbers, but they take you through the whole story so that you have to be patient. And it shows that even while you're being patient, some other stuff is coming up. Your reactions, you have to be in control. And then pray, and then the testimony will come. Without this, there is no testimony without the first four letters, and that is test. So those are the closing words in the Bible. These are my, this is my closing thank you to my homies, who were my co-authors, Victor Morris and Jose Valencia. And I look forward to thanking you with next week's message, which will begin and feature with the letter I. So uh, if you want a word in next week, want to co-author in next week's message, put a word that begins with the letter I in the feed, okay? Uh, and remember, I want you to recognize that God's love undoes everything. I want you to have a good mess because I don't know whether it's morning afternoon or evening, but isn't it great to have good in front of you as out salutation? So have a good mess. And remember that Glue Wednesday reminds you that you don't have to hump to get over. What you need to do is always keep it together. Thank you for enjoying, engaging, and sharing the message of Glue Wednesday. Let's see. Vic says, Take care and be safe, everybody. His I word for next week is going to be important. Even if you're watching the videotape, put your I word in there. Haas's word is going to be inspiration. I'm also thinking introspection. Whatever word you want to be my co-author next week, please put that word in the thread wherever you are, and I'll bring it to the group. Jocelyn, again, <coughs> thanks for joining us from Ivory Coast. We bless you and we thank you and we're praying with you. Everybody else, Vic from New York da and Haas, uh, New Jersey, Staten Island, uh, Daphne in Chicago, Tuesday in Chicago. I don't know if Tuesday jumped on and jumped off, but welcome back Tuesday if you got back on to finish getting your message. Thank you all. God bless you and I'll see you then. Oh, there you go, Daphne. All right. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you all. Sending out the love. Amen. God's love undoes everything. Ciao.